Russia's defense ministry blames Ukraine for downing a military plane that was reportedly carrying Ukrainian prisoners of war. The plane went down in the Belgorod region near the border with Ukraine. Russia says all 74 people on board were killed, including Ukrainians who were being moved in preparation for a prisoner exchange. The Russian Defence Ministry says its radar caught the launch of two Ukrainian anti-aircraft missiles. Ukraine has yet to comment on Moscow's claims, but said earlier uh, the plane was carrying missiles. Let's bring in Sinez Matthew Chance, who's in London. We're getting all our information, really, at this point, aren't we, from Russia? Uh, Russians and the Ukrainians are also commenting on this in, in the sense they're not confirming or denying whether or not they shot this plane out of the sky, although the fact that it is in this area, very close to the Ukrainian-Russia sort of border area, um, you know, it does imply that, you know, it's in, a, it's in a battle zone type environment. And we also know that over the past couple of weeks, uh, the Ukrainian air defence forces have been very active in trying to and succeeding in denying Russian aircraft the freedom of movement inside Russian airspace earlier this month, they shot down a, a very significant aircraft, an A-50, which is a big sort of radar battlefield coordination aircraft, uh, which is only, Russia's only got a handful of them. So that was a big success. This could well be sort of something in, in a similar vein. Um, the other big question is, of course, what was the cargo of this Aleutian 76 military transport aircraft? The Russians, uh, as you mentioned, are saying that this was, you know, as well as the crew, this was predominantly 65 Ukrainian prisoners mm. of war that were being sent back across the border as part of a prisoner exchange. That could well be the case. Um, but what the Ukrainians are saying is that their intelligence indicates that this was carrying munitions, that there were missiles on board uh, meant for the uh, Russian um, S-300 air defence system. And if that's the case, then that would have been a very high-profile target uh, for the Ukrainian air defences. Uh, how do we get confirmation on this? Because presumably the Russians are leading the investigation. Yeah, because it's in, it's in Russian territory. Mm. That's where the, the crash site is. Um, look, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not sure that in a, an environment like this, where there is such an information war mm. uh, underway, as well as an actual hot, you know, live war, that we're going to be absolutely 100% certain on what, the, um, uh, on what the situation is on the ground. But look, look, let's see what happens over the course of the next couple of hours. There's already some video come out which indicates potentially an explosion before the plane you know, kind of hit the ground. Uh, that can indicate an, an explosion on board, possibly a missile, possibly something on board exploding. Look, we, we don't know yet. It's, it's all speculative. But we'll see what comes out in terms of bits of information um, on the ground over the next couple of hours and the next couple of days. The Russians say they're conducting an investigation. But, of course, with, with the Russians heading that investigation, mm. it's likely to be their narrative uh, that is promoted. And the Ukrainians will be investigating as well, but they don't have to look that far, presumably, just to their own weapon systems and whether or not they indeed did take out this aircraft. I, I think there's very little doubt at this point that given the, as I said, the geographical location of this of this crash and, and the fact that, you know, uh, Ukrainian air defences have been so active, it could well have been a, a Ukrainian strike. It, the real contentious issue is what was on board. Was it humans? Mm. Was it POWs from Ukraine? That would be a tragedy. Or was it, was it weapons bound for the front lines? OK, Matthew, thank you so much. Retired Air Force Colonel Cedric Layton joins us from Washington, uh, D.C. Thank you so much uh, for being here. Um, you would have heard Matthew there, you know, things pointing currently to the idea that Ukraine shot down a Russian aircraft which may or may not have had Ukrainian prisoners of war on board. How likely do you think that is and what does it mean? Well, Max, I think it is quite likely that uh, the Ukrainians could have done this. Uh, some of the video that we've seen of this shows a puff of smoke uh, where there could have been a missile impact on the aircraft. And then, as you see here, uh, the aircraft appears to be uh, headed down, and uh, then we'll see a fireball of uh, pretty soon there it is uh, that could actually. Uh, you know, indicate not only the actual impact of the crash, but before that, uh, there might have been a, a puff of smoke that was consistent with a, a missile shooting down uh, this aircraft, whether it was a Ukrainian missile or an or a Russian missile, of course, uh, we, we don't know. Uh, but that is the kind of thing that, uh, that could happen as far as what it means. It could uh, very well be, uh, you know, a significant uh, interdiction of uh, Russian arms shipments. Uh, the plane might have been used to transport uh, weapons from a place like Iran. There's some speculation on social media that this tail number uh, that uh, is assigned to this aircraft was last seen in Iran uh, before coming back into Russia. So there is, you know, some 
uh, possibility there that it did carry weapons that were destined for the front lines in Belgorod be a perfect staging area both for a, a, a weapons uh, delivery as well as for a prisoner exchange. Uh, so each of these uh, stories uh, would be consistent with the flight profile of this aircraft. Would the explosion you saw be consistent with one where, you know, weapons were on board as well? Because a lot of people are suggesting that it only looks like an aircraft crashing as opposed to one full of uh, the weaponry we were talking about. Yeah, it, it really depends. When an aircraft crashes like this, uh, there is almost always a large uh, degree of, uh, of smoke, of fire. Uh, the explosion there was pretty significant. That could be consistent with uh, munitions exploding as they impact uh, the ground, uh, you know, as part of the crash. Uh, but an aircraft of that size, uh, when it crashes, that leaves a big fireball uh, because of the fuel on board, because of uh, you know all the other impacts that uh, that it would have. So it's very consistent with a crash, uh, in whether or not there were weapons on. Board. Uh, the Ukrainians will know whether or not they shot it down, uh, wouldn't they? It wouldn't take them very long to find out. Yeah, you would think that that would be the case. There is the possibility, uh, you know, of uh, you know somebody going, uh, you know or happy or in a situation like this, but uh, these things are usually quite controlled. The Ukrainians have to be very careful the types of munitions that they expend at this point in time because of the munitions shortages that they're experiencing. And given that, uh, it's pretty clear that they would know whether or not they did this. And uh, if they did, in fact, do uh, conduct this mission, uh, then uh, you know they know uh, that they struck this aircraft based on the video and, uh, of course, the Russian reports uh, that we're seeing that the aircraft actually down. So then the question does come down to who was on board, right, and whether or not these prisoners of war were on board. That's the big question right now. It really is, yeah, and that is something that, uh, you know, we would have to see the Russians, uh, you know, handle this. Uh, right now, uh, my understanding is, is that the FSB, the Russian Intelligence Services, the Ministry of Defense, have secured the area, so the normal crash investigations are not uh, going to place in the, the way they would for a civil airliner. Uh, but having said that, it would be normal for a military aircraft to be investigated, a crash of a military aircraft to be investigated by the Ministry of Defense, uh, that the intelligence services involved is also, of course, uh, you know, the po uh, means that there is the possibility that uh, there were other other factors here. But uh, when uh, these num this number of bodies, uh, you know, if they're brought out as part of the uh, release of part of the press release for this uh, incident, then, uh, you know, we have to wonder whether or not they died as a result of this crash or if there was something else going on in, in the case like this. OK, Colonel Cedric Layton, thank you for joining us and um, pointing us to the questions that really do need to be answered when we are looking to this in the coming hours.